Without a doubt, the legendary Stan Winston was a master of his craft, creating the truly memorable effects for the Terminator series, Aliens, Predator, and Jurassic Park. Clearly, Stan Winston was the go-to guy when it came to movie makeup effects. But what about that time he actually directed a movie? Yes, in 1989, Winston jumped into the director's seat to direct the often forgotten about and overlooked Pumpkinhead. The story focuses on a widowed father called Ed Harley, played by Lance Henriksen, where after his son gets killed by reckless teenagers, he seeks revenge, where he visits a witch called Haggis, who summons up the demon Pumpkinhead to carry out Ed's revenge and to kill the group of teenagers. But Ed starts to realise that he's made a mistake and must try to stop this terrifying, murderous supernatural monster in this insanely underrated classic monster movie. Yes, today we are going to continue the Halloween celebrations of 2021 by looking into 10 things that you didn't know about Pumpkinhead, Stan Winston's foray into directing. So, you know, let's check it out. Number 10, based on a poem. Pumpkinhead is indeed based on a poem by writer Ed Justin. The haunting poem was about an evil, powerful, godlike entity which seeks joy and vengeance, who will destroy all those who gets in its way, and no one can survive Pumpkinhead. With it almost sounding like a creepy nursery rhyme or like some kind of old mythology or urban legend. But one thing seems certain if the poem is anything to go by. If Pumpkinhead comes after you, then your number is up. This actually makes a nice change of pace because usually when I talk about movies that are based on literature, they are based on books or comics. So it's kind of refreshing talking about one that's based on a poem. In fact, I think that might even be a Minty Comedic Arts first. Number nine, original title. So the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group saw potential in turning Ed Justin's creepy poem into a feature movie. After all, the company previously produced Evil Dead 2 and were probably looking for their next big horror movie property. However, in the early days of production, the movie was called Vengeance the Demon. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? Like, I get where they were going with it. I mean, after all, the monster in the movie is summoned up for the purpose of vengeance. But it just sounds so mundane and stereotypical. Thankfully, along the way, it was decided to name the movie after the poem that it was based on, Pumpkinhead, which does have an allure about it and sounds like a good name for a movie killer, up there with the likes of Leatherface and Pinhead. Pumpkinhead just sounds more in vogue with the genre, and let's be honest, it is worlds better than Vengeance the Demon. Number 8. Stan the Man So as mentioned, during the 70s and 80s, Stan Winston was the go-to guy when it came to makeup effects, thanks to his work on the Terminator and Predator films, as well as the Monsters Squad and Aliens. So naturally, the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group sent Stan Winston an early draft of the script in an attempt to get him on board to provide the makeup effects for Pumpkinhead. However, upon reading the script, Winston got other ideas. He wanted to stretch out his creative wings and to try out directing for once. And so because of that idea, Winston became Pumpkinhead's director, as well as also helping to come up with the movie's story. So Pumpkinhead was kind of Winston's baby his exploration into finding new and different ventures in the movie industry. With Winston in the director's seat, the creature effects were handed to other artists, including Shane Mahan, who already worked for Stan Winston's studio, who also worked on Aliens and Predator, and Tom Woodruff Jr., who also had previously worked with the Stan Winston studio and would go on to create effects for Starship Troopers and the 2017 IT movie. So it seems that the movie and its effects were in good hands with Stan Winston and his team helming the movie together. Number 7. Lance Henriksen was hesitant to accept the role of Ed Harley. Lance Henriksen and Stan Winston already had a history of working together, as the two had previously worked on The Terminator and Aliens. 
So Henriksen was offered the role of the movie's main lead, the tragic Ed Harley, and was sent a script. However, initially, Henriksen wasn't sold on the script, mainly because he was put off by the title and just couldn't make much sense out of it. So he wasn't exactly jumping up and down to get on the Pumpkinhead bandwagon. However, there was one thing that instantly hooked him in. While randomly flicking through the script pages, he came up to the part of the movie where the Ed character's dead son appears to him and says, What have you done, Daddy? This just really struck a chord with Henriksen and immediately made him want to do it. Granted, it's a powerful scene. So despite having reservations with the title, Henriksen reunited with Stan Winston to work on Pumpkinhead. In fact, round about this time, Lance Henriksen starred in quite a few underrated horror movies like Near Dark and The Horror Show, which they somehow turned into House 3, but it's for another story. Number 6. Ties to Other Fandoms Apart from the connections to Stan Winston and Aliens, Pumpkinhead also has other odd and intriguing connections to well-loved fandoms. Jeff East plays Chris, one of the camping teenagers. East had previously starred as teenage Clark Kent in Superman the Movie. Pumpkinhead also features an early performance by Mai and Bialik, who would grow up to star in The Big Bang Theory. Even the dogs in Pumpkinhead are famous, as the dog Gypsy was the same dog who previously starred as Barney in 1984's Gremlins, and in case you're wondering, the dog's real name was Mushroom. Oh, and the cabin that the teenagers stay in is the same cabin that was used for Friday the 13th Part 4, which is located in Topanga, California. And just to add that extra touch of, oh wow, I didn't see that coming, Pumpkinhead was scored by Richard Stone, who was not famous for scoring horror movies, but rather Warner Brothers cartoons, like Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, Tasmania, and Pinky and the Brain. Number 5. The Design of Pumpkinhead so needless to say, the Pumpkinhead demon monster in Pumpkinhead doesn't actually look like, well, a Pumpkinhead. So if you've never seen the film before and expect the character to look like this, then you're going to be disappointed. And of course, the monster is called Pumpkinhead because he comes from a pumpkin patch. Well, it's a good thing it wasn't a cabbage patch or otherwise he'll be Cabbage Head. I think it's pretty conclusive that Pumpkinhead does resemble a xenomorph from the Alien series. That might be because Stan Winston and the effects crew previously worked on Aliens, who knows. But despite all this, the creature effects are still top tier, and look very impressive even by today's standards. One thing I do like about the Pumpkinhead creature is how it evolves throughout the movie. It starts off looking like a weird mutant baby, but by the end of the movie it almost has a human-like face. In fact, the face of Pumpkinhead was designed to look like Lance Henriksen himself. And yes, if you look closely, it shares his facial features. It's to symbolise that Pumpkinhead is slowly taking the soul of the Ed Harley character, and thus taking on his physical features more and more. Which is an interesting concept. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'm probably going to keep saying it, so apologies in advance. The effects in Pumpkinhead look better than anything we see nowadays, because now they just use CGI, and let's face it, most people just prefer practical effects. Number 4. The atmosphere on set was fun. Thanks to his experience with working with makeup and creature effects, Winston was able to keep the movie's budget low and barely go over its original intended $3 million budget. By all accounts, many people who worked on Pumpkinhead said that the mood on the set was a happy and joyful one, and just a generally fun and positive experience, with comments like pleasant experience and Stan made it so easy being expressed. His experience of working with effects helped, as Winston knew what he wanted on screen and how to do it, and he was very calm and relaxed during filming, often making jokes and using other light humour, as well as generally goofing around to make the cast and crew laugh, which was helpful, especially during the lengthy process of applying makeup to the actors. So it seems that when it comes to Stan Winston as a director, he was an absolute blast to work with. Ah, we all miss you Stan Winston. Well, this makes a pleasant change from my usual behind-the-scenes stories, which usually involve tensions and conflict and clashing of egos. Nope, it seems that Stan Winston was just too damn nice for that. Number 3. Comic Book and Video Game 
In 1993, Dark Horse Comics published a short-lived comic series based on Pumpkinhead called Pumpkinhead The Rites of Exorcism, and it was a sequel to the movie following new characters. Pumpkinhead would have been right at home with Dark Horse, as the company also published comics for Aliens and Predator. And the comics were well illustrated, capturing the horror seen in the movie. Sadly though, the run wasn't successful, as it was intended to be a four-part series, but only two issues were published, till the series was dropped. So fans of the comics, all two of them, as in the two comics, not saying there were two fans, were left with a cliffhanger that was never resolved, which I think is a shame, especially on the premise of having a pumpkin head with wings, which would have been awesome. However, Pumpkinhead did get a second life in the comic book medium, when in 2018, Dynamite Entertainment published a five-part comic book series based on Pumpkinhead. Then, of course, there was the not-so-well-known video game called Blood Wings, Pumpkinhead's Revenge, which came out in 1995 and was heavily based on the second Pumpkinhead movie. Yeah, more on that later. The game is a first-person shooter and was made for Microsoft Windows. Now, I've never played the game before, but yeah, by looking at it, you can tell the game was heavily influenced by Doom. And the game would slip into obscurity as it got really bad reviews, with it being labelled as, quote, the bottom of the barrel of Doom clones. But hey, I don't know, I've never played the game. Number two, sequels and planned reboots. So as with a lot of horror movies, Pumpkinhead became a franchise, as three sequels would follow. The first was Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings, which was a direct-to-video sequel that came out in 1994. Although majority of critics didn't like this entry, it still has its fan base with people who do like it and see it as a worthy sequel, and claim that it's actually pretty entertaining. Then in 2006 and 2007, there were two more entries that were made for the Sci-Fi Channel with Pumpkinhead Ashes to Ashes and Pumpkinhead Blood Feud. And both movies would see the return of Lance Henriksen as Ed Harley. Both entries got fairly mixed reviews. Ashes to Ashes got criticised for coming across as cheap looking, whereas Blood Feud did still get some praise for at least being entertaining. Supposedly, Lance Henriksen expressed his disappointment in the sequels and regretted taking part in them. And I would probably argue that the sequels are nowhere near as remembered as the original. But that said, it does seem that the sequels do have a loyal fan base that believes that all said and done, they are actually pretty entertaining films. Then in 2017, there were talks of a Pumpkinhead reboot with Saw producer Peter Block at the helm. But nothing came of it. Who knows, maybe it might still happen. But yeah, four years later after its announcement, we are yet to see this reboot. Meh, that's okay. I'll just stick with watching the original, so I'm all good. Thanks, it's okay. Number one, failed but not forgotten. Pumpkinhead first received a limited release in October 1988, followed by a more widespread release in January 1989. However, the movie didn't perform well at the box office, only bringing in $4.4 million on a $3.5 million budget. So sadly, Pumpkinhead was not going to be of the same levels of success as Aliens and Predator. It's believed that what hurt the movie's box office performance was the financial collapse of the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group, of which the company ended up being brought out by Carolco Pictures in 1989. It is believed that because of the company's financial difficulties, they only contributed limited marketing for Pumpkinhead, as well as initially giving it a limited release. Incidentally, also at that time, the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group were also going to distribute Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. But after the collapse of the company, that movie ended up getting picked up by Orion Pictures. Something else that I think may have also hurt the movie was its theatrical poster, as it looks so bland and boring and doesn't exactly make you want to rush off and see the movie. Pumpkinhead has since had much better artwork to present the movie when released on home medias like DVD. However, thanks to home video, Pumpkinhead did finally find its fan base, and its popularity has continued to grow from there, where it's gone on to become a cult movie. So it's nice to know that it did finally find its place in pop culture fandom. And I think the real tragedy is that this was the first movie Stan Winston directed, and it initially failed. A few years later, he directed A Gnome Named Norm, the cop buddy movie featuring a gnome, <laughs> okay, which also didn't do very well. Direction-wise, he's actually pretty good, and has a great theatrical style, considering that Pumpkinhead was his first movie. He even won an award for Best First Time Director at the Paris Film Festival. 
I think it's a shame that he didn't make more movies. And I can't help but wonder, had Pumpkinhead been a smash hit, would we have seen Winston direct bigger mainstream films? Well, sadly we'll never know. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel, as after Pumpkinhead, I feel like we saw his best work ever, where he really achieved mind-blowing greatness thanks to his model and makeup effects on movies like Terminator 2 Judgment Day and Jurassic Park, where he really pushed boundaries in what could be achieved with movie effects, and really did deliver some true cinematic magic. Who knows, maybe the failings of Pumpkinhead motivated him to push his limitations of what can be achieved in his movie effects craft. And sadly, Winston passed away in 2008, leaving behind a truly great legacy. As for Pumpkinhead, well, I think it's a worthy horror movie. It looks great and has some memorable shocking moments, with all the ghoulish delights that'll keep horror fans entertained. I also like how the movie questions the conflict of seeking personal revenge and retribution and its consequences. Pumpkinhead will always be remembered as the efforts of a brilliant effects artist directing a brilliantly haunting movie. So if you haven't seen Pumpkinhead, then I highly recommend it. It has a good intriguing premise with good effects and acting. The movie really does need more love, so let's love it. Anyway, I'm Minty and rest in peace, Dan Winston. You are truly missed among the movie loving community. See ya.